In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to make this animation of vines growing to form a word. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.78c. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. We're going to be using an IV Generator add-on. To enable the add-on, open the File menu and select User Preferences. Then click the Add-ons button. In the search box, type Ivy. Now add a check mark here to enable the Ivy Generator add-on. Back in the 3D View window, let's delete the cube. So right-click on it to make sure that it's selected. Then delete it by pressing X. To make it easier to see the scale and location of the objects that we'll be adding, Switch from Perspective to Orthographic View by pressing 5 on the number pad. When we render the final animation, it will be in Perspective View. Now let's add some text. So press Shift-A and select Text. Then rotate on the X-axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. To edit the text, press the Tab key for Edit Mode. Then backspace to delete the default text and enter in your own text. Then press Tab to return to object mode. Next, let's add some thickness to the text. So click the Object Data button and set the extrude value to 0.1. We're going to use the Ivy Generator to generate vines that will follow the shape of the text. But for this to work, we need to convert the text to a mesh. To do that, press Alt C and select Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. Now let's use the Ivy Generator to generate the vines that will follow the text. The vines will follow the currently selected mesh object, which in our case is the text. The vines will start at the location of the 3D cursor, so move the 3D cursor to the bottom of the B by left-clicking. To add the vines, press Shift-A and select Curve and then Add Ivy to Mesh. The Ivy Generator has a lot of settings that you can use to customize it. You should be aware, however, that these settings are only available until you make a change that's unrelated to the Ivy Generator. For example, if you set the material for the text or select another object, then the Ivy Generator settings will no longer be available. Now let's change some of the default settings. We don't need the leaves, so remove the check mark from next to Grow Leaves. Whenever you make a change, you need to click the Update Ivy button to see the changes. In the Size Settings section, set the Max Ivy Length value to 3. This will increase the overall length of the vines. I'll click the Ivy Update button to see the change. Next, change the Adhesion Weight value to 0.25. This controls how closely the vines will stay next to the text. Now we'll change the thickness of the vines. To do that, change the ivy branch size to 0.002. This is what it looks like now. This letter looks like it needs more vines, so let's add some more by using the same starting point. Remember that the 3D cursor sets the starting point. New vines can be added by clicking the Add New Ivy button. But if we click it now, then the new vines will be identical to what we currently have. To make them different, change the random seed value from 0 to 1. Now click the Add New Ivy button and it will generate different vines. Next, let's add some vines to the letter L. So move the 3D cursor to the bottom of the L by left clicking. Then click Add New Ivy. Let's add more vines to it. So change the random seed value to 0 and then click the Add New Ivy button. Now let's add vines to the next letter. So left click the bottom of the E to move the 3D cursor. Then click the Add New Ivy button. We don't need any more vines for this letter, so let's move to the next one. So left click the bottom of the N to move the 3D cursor. Then click the Add New Ivy button. Let's add more vines to it. So change the random seed value to 1, and then click the Add New Ivy button. 
Now move to the D and left click to move the 3D cursor. Then click the Add New Ivy button. Let's add more vines to this one, so change the random seed value to 0 and click the Add New Ivy button. Now move to the next letter and left click to move the 3D cursor. Then click the Add New Ivy button. We don't need more vines for this one, so let's move to the next letter. So left click to move the 3D cursor and click Add New Ivy. We no longer need the text mesh, so find it in the outliner and click the button that looks like an eye and the button that looks like a camera. This will prevent it from being displayed in the current view and in the final render. This is a good time to save what I have so far, so from the file menu I'll select Save As. I'm going to name it Vines.Blend. Next we're going to animate the vines to make them grow, so right click on one of the vines to select it. Then click the Object Data button if it's not already selected. In the Geometry section, there are Bevel Factor settings. If you watch the selected vine while I change the end value, you can see the effect that it has. When the value is 0, the vine is not visible. As I increase it toward 1, it grows until it's completely visible. This is the value that we're going to animate, so let's set that up now. So start by making sure that the timeline is set to frame 1. Then set the end value to 0 so that the vine is not visible. Then set a keyframe by right clicking on the end value and select Insert Keyframe. Now move the timeline to frame 10. We're going to keep the end value set to 0 for the first 10 frames, so right click it again and select Insert Keyframe. Now move the timeline to frame 180. At this frame we want the vine to be completely visible, so set the end value to 1. Then right click it and select Insert Keyframe. Now if I scrub the timeline, you'll see the vine grow between frames 10 and 180. Next, we're going to copy this animation to the other vines. So from the Select menu, go to Select All by Type and click on Curve. This will select all of the vines since they're all made with curves. The first vine that we selected will be a different color which indicates that it's the active object. To copy the animation from the active object to the other selected objects, press Ctrl L and select Animation Data. Now when I scrub the timeline, you'll see that all the vines grow between frames 10 and 180. Now let's set up the ground for the scene. So press Shift A and add a mesh plane. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view. Now drag the ground to the center and move it to the bottom of the text. Next, scale it up in size by pressing S then 3, then Enter. Now let's duplicate this plane and use it for a fence that will be behind the text. So press Shift D to duplicate, and then click the right mouse button. Then rotate it on the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view, and drag the plane to the back of the text. Next we're going to add some vines to the ground. So right click the plane that we're using for the ground to select it. Then left click the ground near the left side of the B to move the 3D cursor. Now press Shift A and select Curve and then add Ivy to Mesh. Now left click the ground near the center of the text to move the 3D cursor. Then click Add New Ivy. Now left click the ground near the right side of the text and click the Add New Ivy button again. We'll do this one more time. So left click in front of the text and then click the Add New Ivy button. Now let's add a material to the ground. So click the Material button and then click New. Then come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. 
Then click the Use Nodes button. We'll keep the diffuse surface type. Now click the button next to the white color and select Image Texture. This will allow us to select an image to use for the ground. I'm going to use this image. You can find a link to it in the video description. After downloading the image, click the Open button, navigate to the image, and select it. Next we need to UV unwrap the ground so that the image can be seen on it. So switch to the compositing screen layout. Then click the Shader Nodes button. These are the nodes that are used to set up the material. We'll be making a change to them a little later. To unwrap the floor, we need to be in edit mode. So move the mouse cursor into the 3D view window on the bottom and press tab for edit mode. Then press A once or twice until the whole ground is selected. I'm going to switch to material view so that we can see the image on the ground after we unwrap the ground. Now press U to unwrap and select unwrap. The image should now be visible on the ground. Next we'll set the scale for the image. So in the UV image editor window, click the drop down menu next to the new button and select the image that we added. Then zoom out. This shows our ground object overlaid on the image. Now while still in the UV image editor window, press A once or twice until the ground is selected. Then scale it by pressing S, then 3, then enter. Next we'll add some depth to the texture by connecting the image color output to the displacement input. This change will not be apparent until we switch to rendered view later in the video after the lighting is set up. Now let's add a material to the fence object. So press tab for object mode. Then right click on the fence behind the text to select it. Then click the material button. You may need to expand this panel on the right to bring the Material button into view. Now click the New button. We'll keep the Diffuse surface type. Next, click the button next to the white color and select Image Texture. This will allow us to select an image to use for the fence. I'm going to use this image. You can find a link to it in the video description. After downloading the image, click the Open button, navigate to the image, and select it. Next we need to UV unwrap the fence so that the image can be seen on it. So press tab to switch to edit mode. Then press A once or twice until the whole fence is selected. Now press U to unwrap and select unwrap. The image should now be visible on the fence. Next we'll set the scale for the image. So in the UV image editor window, click the drop down menu and select the fence image that we added. Then zoom out. This shows our fence object overlaid on the image. Now while still in the UV image editor window, press A once or twice until the fence is selected. Then scale it by pressing S, then 3, then Enter. You'll notice that there is a seam in the fence. So drag the fence down until the seam is just below ground level. Next we'll add some depth to the texture by connecting the image color output to the displacement input. Now move the cursor into the 3D view window and press tab to switch to object mode. Then switch back to the default screen layout. I'm going to save what I have so far. Next let's set up the light source. So press 3 on the number pad for right side view and zoom out until you can see the lamp. Then right click the lamp to select it and drag it until it's about 3 grid divisions to the left of the center. Now click the object data button if it's not already selected. Make sure the point lamp is selected and set the size to 3. Then click the use nodes button and set the strength to 5000. Now let's set up the material for the vines. So right click one of the vines to select it. Then click the material button if it's not already selected. Then click the new button. We'll keep the diffuse surface type. 
set the color to a hex value of 7B A500. Next, we're going to make some changes to the material that will help make it look more realistic. So switch to the compositing screen layout. In the 3D view window, I'll switch to rendered view so that we can see what it will look like when it's rendered. Now we'll use the node editor to mix in a glossy color. So in the node editor, press Shift A and select Shader and then Mix Shader. Drop it on the connection coming out of the diffuse shader. Then press Shift A and select Shader and then Glossy. Connect it to the bottom mix shader input. Then set the roughness to 0 0.05. Now press Shift A and select Input and then Layer Weight. Connect the facing output to the factor input. This will control how the diffuse and glossy shaders are blended together. The surface areas that are angled away from the camera will use more of the glossy shader than the surface areas that are angled toward the camera. Next, set the blend value to 0.15, which seems to work well for the vines. Now switch back to the default screen layout. I'll switch to material view so that we can see the green color. Next, we're going to copy this green material to the other vines. So make sure that the vine with the green color is still selected. Now from the Select menu, go to Select All by Type and click on Curve. This will select all of the vines. To copy the material to the other selected objects, press Ctrl L and select Materials. To see what this will look like when it's rendered, I'll switch to Rendered View. Next, we'll set up the camera view. So I'll switch back to Material View for this. Now press 0 on the number pad for camera view. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the Properties panel and put a check mark next to Lock Camera to View. Then press N again to close the Properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. Next, I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. Now I'll switch to Rendered View so that we can see what the final render will look like. Now let's finish setting up the animation. The animation is going to be 200 frames long, so set the end frame value to 200. Now click the Render button and then open the sampling section. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 32. The larger this value is, the better the final animation will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now come up to the Output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. Click on this button and select a directory. Next, click here to set the file format. There are multiple movie formats that you can choose from. I'm going to use Aug Theora. Up here you can set the frame rate. I'm going to increase it to 30 frames per second because it plays a little more smoothly in my video player when I do this. Now we're ready to render the animation, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. To render the animation, click on the Animation button. If you want to stop the rendering process before it's done, you can press the Escape key or you can click the X next to the Render Progress bar. 
Now I'll pause the video until it's done. The animation is done rendering now. It took my computer about an hour and 10 minutes to render. This is the final frame that was rendered. If you want to return to the previous view, you can click this button and select 3D View. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation, or you can press Ctrl F11. The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. Now if you open up Windows File Explorer or something equivalent, you can navigate to your movie file. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you specified, you can now play your video. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.